people to sit out for a minute. Okay, so page 73 in there. Fill in the links. Um, first part of the scripture, that's pretty easy. As for you, you meant <laughs> evil against me by God. <laughs> and just for good against. Okay. And so then he asked the question what's the issue for us when we go through hard, painful trials while knowing that God has a design in each situation? Exactly, I fill in the blank, but it did talk about this. So we'll trust him, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that kind of boils down to are we going to trust him or not? Are we trust him? Okay, then um, texts like Lamentations 3.37 show us that the Old Testament writers inspired by God we're simply absorbed in the uh, sovereignty. Yeah, good job, Michael. Sovereignty of God. Okay, and how does the Bible describe the emotional life of God? Multiple emotions at one time. Mm -hmm. Okay, David. What was that word you said? Okay. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he is a multitasker of emotions. <laughs> Seemingly um, contradictory emotions simultaneously. Yeah. And see, that's where we're different. To some extent, yeah, I mean, in, in many ways it's true. Although they ask the question later on down here mm -hmm. um, can you ever think of a time when you experienced contradictory emotions at the same time? Mm -hmm. And he gave one example actually in the video there. Yeah. Disciplining your children. Yeah, yeah that's an that's mm -hmm. example that all of you are parents and you just can understand. You guys. I don't know if you want to go to that yet, but I also thought of death mm -hmm. of a Christian. You know, I, mean, I, I thought of yeah. death. Somebody that you, you, you feel conflicted because you don't want to lose them, mm -hmm. but at the same time you feel joy because you know where they're in a better place. Mm -hmm. Also at a wedding, you know, you know you're happy for, let's say it's your son or daughter and they're getting married, but you're sad that a part of your life is over. I'm just thinking that it's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, when if God does not contradict himself, I, um, you know that God delights in the death of his saints because, well, not because, but I just thought, because the saints don't really die. Mm -hmm. we're, we, you know, we're never going to die, really. Mm -hmm. So that's just my answer. Mm -hmm. Marriage is, they're getting married is great, but you know that school just started. Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not over. It's just beginning. That's good. So in, there's a sense, of, as, as you were saying, Mark, God that had a far deeper level than we do that they will experience those conflicting emotions simultaneously. But, but there's a sense in which we can kind of relate a little bit to it. Yeah. I mean, it, the, the thing about that is, is these are seemingly, on the surface, contradictory uh, in Scripture. But we know God has revealed himself to us so that we might know him and understand him up to the point that he's revealed himself to us. We can't experientially understand all of that. But by faith, we can look at that and know that it is not a contradiction and believe it. I don't have any problem mm -hmm. believing that or understanding it to the point that I can understand. So we can't experientially understand it um, because we are different. We are flawed. We, 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 we're made in God's image, but we're not made. I think what it says is right, and I think the way that we are able to deal with that, it's a supernatural thing, the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit, when it says trust and obey. We have the ability to trust and obey, even though that we don't totally comprehend the mind of God. And maybe it's not for us to do that now. Maybe our eternity, every day, we will logarithmically learn more and more about our Redeemer. Mm -hmm. And we'll never run out of more. Right. right. That's right. So, yeah, it's true, because I think um, this this willingness to trust God, even in this, the things that we can't understand, is one of the defining marks of, of what conversion is. I mean, God gives us that, that faith in him that, that di distinguishes a non-Christian who's just, you know, picking over these. You know, this doesn't make sense. How can God be three and yet one? No, I need to just get all. Whereas to a Christian, I mean, at the end of the day, we're like, I don't know exactly how the Trinity works, but that's what God has revealed about himself, and I mm -hmm. accept it. And one of the distinguishing marks of a Christian. Right, it has to be a, a, it's got to be by faith. Mm -hmm. There is an element of faith that has to enter into this. And if God um, did in our, I mean, 
if we understood everything about God, we, we wouldn't be God. <laughs> well, we wouldn't be different than him. Yeah. Or we're very different from him. Okay, let's see. In the last link there, according to Piper, God has blank or willing and delaying. Horrible. Level two. Okay, good. All right. Okay, so what, uh, was there anything particularly helpful or insightful uh, in what we heard from Piper there? His uh, explanation there in Lamentations was willingly, he, for he does not afflict willingly. And then uh, it is incredibly difficult to explain that. I mean, he attempted to explain that in human understanding of They're not, I'm, I'm just my own limited understanding, but there might be a danger in even trying to go there and explain it, um, which is not necessary for me uh, personally to understand um, the seeming contradiction of God uh, causing destruction and hurtful things and loving at the same time. Um, I see that through the lens of Jesus Christ. Where he sees us as perfect, perfected by the blood of Christ, and so that's sufficient. And I, I don't know. I just, I have a, a respect and a holy fear of God, and I don't know if I want to know everything. <laughs> and, and is that where you're using the placing in, in the context of danger? You use the word danger, which is a very powerful. Yeah, word. I think for me it might be. I don't want. Because here's here's what happens, and you know we can all get to. Uh, we should never be um, wholly righteous and say, "Oh, I would never do this, or I would never do that." Look at Lucifer. Did. You know, he was one of the most beautiful creatures, and now he hates God and wants to be God. Yeah, he, he, I think we can safely say he knows more about God than we do. Yeah, he right, does. right. So contentment in your mm -hmm. salvation and mm -hmm. resting in the assurance of being sealed by the Holy Spirit and being obedient as a lamb. And mm -hmm. I, I want to go there more than I want to totally understand who God is. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just want to accept. Does that I make think, sense? I'm I think Tim's got a good point because when, when we spend hours and days and weeks and you know read this and that trying to figure out God. I mean, all this effort. And, and, and that's what this is. That's what this is. This is an effort to understand who God is. At some point, it starts detracting from this faith element that we just have to accept God on certain terms. And one of those terms is, I'm never really going to understand everything about God. And I think I, I think that's where you're going, Tim. Is that kind of where you're going? I'm not sure. It's a it's in my heart. It's a desire of my heart to know everything about Him. He's God. Mm -hmm. I'm His created person, and I'm thankful that He so chose to create me and call me to Him. Mm -hmm. And Amen. I'm I rest in that, mm -hmm. and that's where I come up with my I my lower methodology of thinking. My like Tim's philosophy is, I'm happy to be the janitor in heaven. <laughs> I mean, it's just all this, I, I just, hey man, I'm there. I just, and, and I guess we're still not understanding why you, you, you choose, chose I want to learn more about God, I do, and I want to learn all I can about him. It's just not, uh, <laughs> and I want to be close to him. It's sort of like the woman touching Jesus' robe on the back when he turned around, who touched me? Who touched me? There's a song about you're saying you're blessed because it's not mandatory to know all these things. Yeah. Amen. I think we have an obligation to to become more intimate with God by knowing and learning more about Him, constantly moving in that direction. We will not know any more about God than what He has revealed in Scripture. That is His revelation to us about Him. And I think we can search that endeavor to know Him more over a lifetime, and we will never completely plumb its depths. Um, but we do have an obligation to to do so, to make right. that attempt. Right. Um, and that's how God, 
That's how we have that relationship with God, knowing him. Knowing him, what he has revealed. I mean, he has given us this because he wants us to know everything that's in there. As long as we keep it scriptural. And if we get to that point where we say, well, this isn't really in the Bible, but I think this is where mm -hmm. I think we should stop it. And that's where, when it says according to John Piper instead of according to the Bible, mm -hmm. I get a little like, mm -hmm. ah, you know, he's taking us to this other, and I could be easily misled with his philosophical going off. And so, yeah, that just according to John Piper, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if that's the right approach for yeah, once we go outside that, we come back. We come back. Yeah, because then yeah. it becomes it becomes <laughs> arbitrarily John Piper. Yeah, I think I think that's where you're going. Yeah, with it's yeah. more like okay, it's this arbitrary is my, at that. Oh, point. I'm a John Piper follower, and this is his whole. Instead of, and so this they is just what the Bible saying. Let's stick to that instead of going off on right. these pictures and illustrations of what it could yeah, be. Yeah, he didn't say that though. And I think what we would agree is the helpful thing in this is where he just brought out the different scriptures showing that. The seeming contradictions and yeah. leaving the tension there. Hmm. Um, instead of, you know, I like where you talked about um, it's really hard to be biblical. It's much easier just to have your philosophical right. system and pull certain verses that support that and ignore the rest. He was trying mm -hmm. to, to pull divergent verses in to show more complexity there. It, remember, like in 1 Corinthians, God has gifted people within the church with certain gifts teaching, pastoring, things, being among the top ones. So God has gifted the church with men with great knowledge and abilities. So we should also we should also use these people and and they've got great analogies and they've got a way of explaining scripture so that we can understand it. So we should, you know, we, we should not, you know, be I am of Paul and I am of Apollos and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But these people are gifts to the church all throughout time. Calvin, Luther, all, all those people. Um, so we should use them, we should study them, we should read them. Just but we should also be careful. Yes. Yeah. Right, and I think that's what me is saying. As soon as you hear John Piper says, mm -hmm. or according to John Piper, I think, well, then I, a red flag kind of goes up. Every, John Piper says, Piper says some things I disagree with. Right, <laughs> and every chapter, I've only done the first four chapters, but it seemed like that kept, according to John Piper, according to this other author, according... And it's just like, you know what? Just keep it according to this verse or according to the Bible, according. So that kind of throws me like, you know, too much attention to the author and writer instead of the Holy God and the Bible, the Word of God. Right. But that's just one question out of the group. We're dealing with the brother in Christ here, John Piper, that I think is on a different level of understanding mm -hmm. things. If you read a lot of his, like, Christian hedonism, I mean, that's like, you really are desiring God to read some of those books. It's like, man, this guy's really, he's like really into this level of, it's like, wow, you know, and, and, and it's good to stretch ourselves, I think. Uh, but um, I heard R.C. Sproul say one time, the best sermon, the best explanation he's ever, ever heard on the sovereignty of God was from John MacArthur. And that is a great series. I, I'm not saying anything bad about Piper, but it was more simplistic, perhaps, uh, and my tune and my frequency is who I hear. Some of the stuff John Piper said is like, whoa, man, I'm, I'm just like, <laughs> I have to really kind of reach and go, man, where is that? I don't get that. Does that make sense? That's it's what I like about Piper. Right, it stretches right. you. Yeah. It makes you think outside of your own right. thinking. Yeah. He right. thinks like yeah. you never thought you'd ever think, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I appreciate it. John Piper does this a lot where you're he, bringing up verses that put verses side by side help you see the, the tension there and then give you a possible solution for it. But, but um, it seems like I don't normally notice the verses that are in tension. And he, he'll take them like, well, didn't you ever notice this and this? Like mm -hmm. Luke 17 says, not a hair of your head will perish. And then a couple verses later it says, uh, some of you are going to get killed. And so how that, anyway, so he, mm -hmm. he brings those up and uh, <coughs> then, then gives a possible solution. So anyway, um, but as you said, Scripture must be our primary guide in, in the works of men like like Piper's are um, we must always be careful and, and um, use them but not um, make idols of them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, a yeah, it's easy to become a, a, a Piper
hyper follower instead of a, a Jesus follower, you know, I mean, it's, here's, here's this person right in front of me that's telling me all this stuff, and it sounds so good, and it's so truthful, and wow, you know, you get just enamored with that, you know, and so it's easy. It's, and some guys, that's their intention. And, other guys, and, and, and I think that's why I really appreciate yeah. what Mia said. Absolutely. Re total wisdom there. Yeah. You really have to be, think about what a man's interpretation of that is. And these guys are human. They're not They're not Exactly. <laughs> so yes. they, they may have the best intentions, but they may be doing things that to others. And it's ultimately, it's going to be us. It's we're, we're accountable to ourselves for that, for how we take things and how we... See, let's look uh, on page 74, since we've got a couple minutes left here. So the second application question there, um, they have Romans 8, 28, and think of a testimony from your own life where God was at work for good in a difficult or painful trial. So we don't have a whole lot of time, but if you can just kind of think of and describe in 20 words or something, a, something that you've been through where it seemed like Something bad that God allowed in your life, but then how God was at work for good in that. And I'm sure all of us have many illustrations of things like that. Mom's life. What's that? Your mother's life. Yeah. I did. What did you say, Ward? Anne's life. Oh, Anne's life. Yeah. Okay. It's true. It's been a source of blessing not only to her, but to many other people, including me. It's mm -hmm. one of the primary shaping factors in my own life. Mm -hmm. My, um, Amy was um, real sick and got to cancer and mm -hmm. she was going to die. Mm -hmm. And I gave that testimony so many times. And hopefully that would, I mean, bring glory to God and make people think about getting saved. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the neighbor next door dying, I've used that over and over to tell about it and present the gospel, basically. <clears throat> it's a great story, and then I hook them in. So uh, I know like illnesses or things like that are often used by God. It seems like to something that seems like it's bad, but something that God turns for good. What's another kind of category of problem you can think of that God allows in our life? Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. I think that's generally <coughs> the rule. So, I mean, see, generally. What other kinds of suffering are there that are common that we go through besides physical illness? Oh, oh gosh, there could be a... Children. Employment. Yeah, good, I mean, okay. yank uh, the financial rug out mm -hmm. from underneath somebody. Boy, they're, they're either going to be cursing God or they're going to be pleading to God. Mm -hmm. One of the two. What's, what's another kind of... The, the dark spiritual oppression of continually praying for souls that you want to be saved by particularly family members mm -hmm. and you don't see any mm -hmm. light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that can be really discouraging, but you just keep doing it because you know that God is faithful and mm -hmm. you hope that he will choose them to be the elect. Mm -hmm. But that can be discouraging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think God has commanded us to do that. Mm -hmm. So there's an element of obedience there when we see, well, I'll just use the context of family members. We see their need, we see them destroying themselves or doing very foolish things, and we know the answer. But we can't do it for them. So we need to be obedient and, and just bring them before the throne and saying, God, you know, you commanded me to pray for these. I'm praying for them, and you know, at that point, it becomes a sovereign issue with God. Mm -hmm. God is the one that will reach down and do the mm -hmm. work or whatever that needs to occur in that person's life. Mm -hmm. That's true, and it's, but it's neat how God uses even those relationship problems, uh, not only for us to pray for them to be changed, but also God uses that even, like the story of Joseph or other stories we've looked at, the sins of other people where they're disobeying God's moral will, but God uses that even in our own lives for good. Um, when they sin against 
against us, and and uh, so God uses those relationship problems, even when even you know even if we were totally innocent, which usually isn't the case, but even, even if we were, God uses their sin against us for our, for our good. <laughs> it's just amazing how that works. All right. Well, let's close. And uh, Tim, would you pray for us? Dear Lord in heaven, we're grateful to be here this 